right, here we go. It's Doc Talk time, which means Dr. Jenna is in the house. No Zoom, no Riverside. No? No, no. You are sitting here at the Rolf Hotel's podcast studio. We're going to talk medicine. James, you can't say in the house. It should be in the house. In the house. In the house. A little bit of Arsenio Hall. Do you remember Arsenio Hall? Um, No. So... I have to, no do, idea do you what remember this Coming is. to America, the movie with Eddie Murphy and No. Really? There's quite a lot of films I haven't seen generally. I'm not I have seen Top Gun 2, but other than that, there's did a lot of Did you see Top Gun 1? I did see Top Gun 1 back in the day. Okay. I I, I could do with a revisit because there were things I had forgotten that they referred to quite a lot in Top Gun 2. And I was thinking, gosh, I don't remember what happened. Yeah. Have you seen it? Did you see the yes. second one? Yeah. IMAX. Yeah. Tom Cruise, he's really dyeing his hair, isn't uh, clearly, he? Yeah. Clearly. Clearly. Mean, he looks good. Who, like, I just told you I feel like I've aged 100 years in the last few months. So he's looking really good, but wow, that is some dyed uh, that hair. That is, I, I was looking at that going, you know, we're like of the same vintage and my hair is not jet black like his. It's not even jet black. It's that like brownish. a really very definite brown. Yeah, that, that dark brown. Yeah. I, I feel like he'd probably look better if he let it go. Yeah, you know, he's kind of have that Harrison Ford hair look, I'm sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. Look at George Clooney. He's oh, rocked there, the white Clooney star. for, yeah. Yeah, for years. Yeah. Mr. Clooney, except for he drinks that awful coffee. Uh, Which the, coffee? Nespresso. Oh, right, you don't like Nespresso? I, I just find, you know, nothing to Nespresso. Okay, they'll never be sponsoring our podcast <laughs> now. Thank you. No, I, I just find, look, Nespresso is, is interesting. I find they all taste the same. Right. I just don't find that variety once you put it through the machine with the you know whatever's going on in those those capsules it just tastes very similar you know if you did a podcast sure just purely on coffee i think you would be really reaching an audience with that you know years ago we did a little bit with matt over at raw coffee talking about coffees ah. we should probably do that again we should probably get the coffee podcast get matt. Going. come on yeah. matt get down get matt do it over there right at raw I do you ever go hang out at Raw? I have hung out at Raw, oh, okay. and it's absolutely lovely coffee place. And I mean, I don't drink coffee, but I like the fact that they have yeah. sparkling water on tap. Oh, isn't that nice? The only thing I have is quite a lot of these, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, was it Matthew? <laughs> what was his name again? <laughs> Matt. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. The only thing I have about some of the cool, trendy coffee places is they often have these quite chic, shabby chic looking Yeah wooden tables and chairs and I, I'm, I'm more about comfort yeah so do you remember more cafe yes there's only one i can see now in mall of the emirates but they have That's these it. big comfy chairs there was used to be one in rashdia that was the first one i ever went to it was right by the emirates airlines uh irish village area did that close down i guess it did. there was one just down here as well yeah. in downtown oh that's right there was loads of them they were yeah. everywhere there was a big one in dubai mall and that's where i would go and i'd sit I and like put that. up camp for yeah. hours because it was so comfortable yeah. you just got yourself t- even take your shoes off and you had your socks on it was lovely felt like you were in the library and i mean it's probably not great for business maybe that's why they've closed down people parked up and just ordered sparkling water whereas raw's doing you know it seems to be doing yeah. a lot better so but that that's the kind of place i like sorry mm. matthew yeah well we will get back to the, the podcast and, and this all came back to hair and george clooney mm-hmm. yes, amazing amazing that the trip we do here <laughs> No, when really we're supposed to be talking about healthcare, so. Yeah, it, well, it, I guess we could be talking about hair treatment. You, know, you know, this is an interesting, because I, I, when we had a friend who had cancer, and I think actually she's going or has gone for a PET scan so that she will be certified cancer-free, but it's been years now. It's been years. So I don't know what that number is. How many years? Five. Okay, five so it's five years. So this is year five. And when she was going through chemo and started losing all her hair, myself and and uh, Wes, who is what's in the fridge? If you're on Instagram, what's in the fridge? This guy Wesley uh, does this whole cooking show. He is not a chef. He's he's uh, he's really into writing for comedy TV, comedy news. But he produces a rather funny Instagram YouTube series on just cooking what's in your fridge. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he, and he goes, he's pretty extreme in what he, you know, in the setup, so it's it's well done. And the whole point of that is, when our friend was getting chemo, we both shaved our heads. I remember you doing yeah. that. Yeah, you had quite the head, James. I had quite the long blonde hair because I'd been dyeing it for years. It grew back in this lovely George Clooney-esque color. But one of the side effects 
of no longer dyeing my hair is almost zero hair fall. I mean, you get you get standard mm-hmm. hair fall, but I used to be able to put my hands through and, you know, you kind of pull on it. And, and not that I would get a whole bunch of hair falling out my hands, but there was hair in my in my fingers. Yeah, but you you made your hair lighter. And when yeah. you make your hair lighter, you have to use bleach and it makes the hair more brittle. Whereas yeah. if you go dark, apparently, and I'm not a hairdresser, it can be actually quite nourishing to the hair. Really? So it's it's going up Because I was thinking about going the jet black, like the, the not natural black color. What? <laughs> oh, James, I'm getting a bit anxious here. <laughs> yeah, but then every time I suggest this, my wife goes, the maintenance, the maintenance, like the, the roots. And you, James, why, why? Yeah. Why this black? No, I just because you just you always want what you don't have, right? Yeah, but your hair looks <laughs> look. Your hair, looks, your hair's looking great. We just had a long conversation about how I have a number of male friends that are currently investigating different ways of reducing their hair loss. I uh. often see people that come for either fat transfer in their scalp, PRP in their scalp, all to try and keep expensive can be quite uncomfortable you can't really numb the area so quite painful and they do it month on month to try and reduce the hair loss which which one of these is the the prp the and you must get fat transfer as well and then and it's painful it can be very painful to inject because think about how tender your scalp can be some people are very just put it just underneath the skin yes Then the other things that you can take are oral medications. We talked about finasteride before, which in the large majority of population, they have no side effects. But the side effects are quite pronounced if you do get them. Like what kind of things? You're looking at psychiatric problems, so people oh. can get very depressed, oh. very anxious. Um, it can have a huge effect on libido, impotence. They can get womanizing features such as gynecomastia, where they get like sort of man boobs, etc. Ah. So... It's a, it's a risk to take. Whereas, look at you. You've got a cracking head of hair, James. You it's don't not, have to I'm worry not losing about it. That's for any sure. of this. That's no. for sure. And it grow, it's, darn, it's growing quick. Like you, I haven't seen you in a few weeks. And you said, wow, your hair's getting really long. Yeah, I really had that long. the other day here, actually. Naveen, who, who runs the show at the hotel here at, uh, at the Rove, he said, wow, your hair is looking good. And I, I always think when someone randomly, especially a guy, comments on a guy's hair, that's either yeah. That's a real that's compliment. A, uh, that's a, so yeah. I, I, no, I'm 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 really happy with the hair. I I did have a great question months ago when I was getting a cut, and the the, the hairdresser, the hairstylist, he said, uh, "What color are you using on your hair?" And I said, "This is the natural color." And he said, oh, is, "People want your color hair. Like you're the color that people are going into the hairdresser for yeah. and saying, I want that gray streaky kind of thing." So yours is the color. So. And yet, there you are talking about dying it jet black, James. Because <laughs> you always want what you don't have, right? I know. I think rather than investigating how you can change your hair, you should start like doing cool things. Like you can get one of those David Beckham style hair bands that we used to have as a child that clips around the back and it makes like a zigzag. Yeah. Or you could even experiment with the Batman bun. You know, I even see yeah. people in my children's class, <laughs> boys, that are rocking a man bun. And it's like it's yeah. totally universally acceptable. Yeah. I, I don't know. You're not sure? No. I could no. just see your fair pigtails. I, I did have long hair at one point, you know, shoulder length hair uh, years ago. We got the photos to prove it, but I never put it in a bun or a ponytail. I just always wore it long. Did it shaggy? I just have it. Yeah. And I think I did get a perm too at that point. So it was slightly curly. I really, <laughs> really want was, to see this. It was a wave perm. I'll, I, I, I'll look for one of those. I got a couple of those pictures at home. I'll send it to you when I get home. Do you think you're one of those people generally that just always has to change something? In fact, we were hair's, just talking. Hair's pretty common in the pictures of our family. If you go through a 30-year you know, retrospective, pretty much every six months my hair looks different. Yeah. Whether but, it's length or style or color or something. But this is you just typically as well. I turned before and I noticed that we now have two cameras. Yes, we've got two. On <laughs> the podcast, whereas previously there had been one. Sometimes it's, we're going to do this this 15-minute clip. Then it's, we're going to have a health tip of the day. Then we're going to have a 30-minute, you know, it's like you are the master of reinvention. So uh, in case you're wondering about the podcast and what's going on with the two cameras, so you, you can obviously find us on YouTube. And what you're going to find with the podcast is we've got the long podcast, so the entire show, and it goes up in audio and in video form. And then there are podcast shorts. So we've got Doc Talk Short. And usually there's about four parts to a show end up 
as shorts up on YouTube and in the in the the audio version. So you can you know, get your favorite piece on replay over and over. So that's, <laughs> that's that, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never know. I I mean I've heard of people doing that. They say, oh, I've got this wonderful quote that came from you know maybe it might be from you. You might have said something, and I just keep it. It's in my file, and every time I'm feeling like I just need a little pick me up, I just put on some Jenna, and there we go. Oh my god, yeah, know, <laughs> people are people are doing that. Like, well, there is right. I, I need to find the name of this. So you said about someone before. There is a brilliant doctor, and he's become very famous. And his name is Dr. Glaukenflecken. Glaukenflecken. So I think it's a play on glaucoma. Okay. Um, so gla- so it sounds like, spelt like glu- glaucoma, but then with a flecken on the end. And he makes, I, I, I've got to send it to you, James, because yeah. he makes the funniest sketches about <laughs> health and about the hospital <laughs> yeah. and the stereotyping of different specialties of doctors. And he pretty much makes ones every day. And that's what I go to when I need a little pick-me-up because it always makes me giggle. There you go. You see, that's the key. Glucan Fecken. Glucan Fecken. Glucan Fecken, whoever he is. All right. So where are we going? <laughs> we wanted to talk summer. Yeah. We, so and far, we've talked about everything other, but yes. Yeah, we talked about everything it. else. But we, it, and it's this time of year, I always start thinking, okay, we're going to start doing some traveling. We're going to start doing some vacationing. A lot of people have still got a few weeks of school left with their kids, if they've got kids. And inevitably, you get ready for the vacation, you get going, someone gets an ear infection, someone gets something going on with the throat, someone's got an ingrown toenail, uh, you, you know, you've got whatever meds you're taking and you've got to go get a checkup and they got to, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you've got to go away and you're going to be away in this case from here for a month. And you realize when you get away and you get an injury of some sort, some stupid thing, right? Like maybe you sprain an ankle or whatever, or, you know, you get a, an ear infection and you know what you do when you're here. And now you get to wherever you're going, which is there. And while you could treat whatever you're doing that way, there is going to be a lot different than here. And it, many times not nearly as convenient. And I, and I just going to go back to, I don't know how many years ago, 15 years ago, maybe one of my boys had thrush. So maybe it's 20 years ago. And, and we, we, you know, had it here and it would happen a couple of times a year. So we knew what it was and there was a treatment, you know, you had this creamy stuff that I, I think, I think it was an oral. I'm going to assume it was an antifungal. Yeah. Some kind of antifungal that you put in and, and it was great. It was easy. You know, just go to the store. We knew it. You talk to the doctor. Yeah, go and get this. Okay. We went and got it. Got back to Canada. I said, well, you know, went to the pharmacy, said, look, we clearly it's got thrush. We just need some of this. And they go, yeah, you need a prescription. And we went, you got to be joking. He's like, no, no, you got now you got to go to the doctor and you got to go see a doctor who's going to take a look in and, you know, who knows what they're going to want to do. And all you need is this antifungal that is prescription based. And so something that yeah. was a five minute deal is in now Dubai. turned into a two hour deal plus, plus, plus. You know, people often don't think about this when they're either looking to relocate country or they're looking to just go on a simple holiday, especially if you've got children who pick up everything <laughs> and also can decline very, very quickly. Same yeah. for if you've got elderly relatives and you decide to take a holiday. So people just assume assume the healthcare is going to be there and sometimes that's I, I, not the I, case. I'm just going to stop you for just one second. You're the only, the second person I know who says the word assume, assume. You and Mr. Richard K. Wood. I say... <laughs> assume. Ash- ass- assume. Yeah, oh my gosh, I do. I never, yeah, I never yeah, knew yeah. I did it until only, now. Only you assume. and Richard, Mr. Richard K. Wood. I'm giving you the... Assume, the, yeah. I, I mean, I, I always, I always often wonder, I said, okay, it's got to be some British thing. Cause it's probably northern. Maybe. I don't know if a clue where he is from. But, you know, second light photography. Go look it up if anyone figures out where he's, he's from. Good. He's good. He's very good. Did you see my latest headshot? Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, I haven't put it up yet. It's awesome. James is putting a lot of photographs of himself up at the moment. I yes. have noticed. It's masked. It's, with it's, that hair, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so assuming, <laughs> people assume, assume, I can't even say I it. I know, it's hard. You can't say it. No, because it, it sounds totally bizarre. Because I don't know how you get the shh in there. It's... Assume. A-S-S-U-M-E. How you do you get assume. The sh- it's, like no a, it's like a sneeze. Yeah. Shoe. S-H-O-E. A shoe. There's no sh- There's no H. Well, I've never sh- noticed this until today. And <laughs> yeah. now I'm going to be horribly, horribly self-conscious for the rest of time about my <laughs> assume. But most of us don't consider <laughs> before we go on holiday what the healthcare is going to be like. Yeah, yeah. And even myself, 
as a health professional, I never really thought about it until oh. I had children. Oh. Because suddenly I would think, hang on, what happens if they got ill? Because they, especially yeah. when they were little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were always getting sick. And suddenly places like um, going to Sri Lanka or somewhere a bit more exotic, I'd think, well, hang on, let me look at what the healthcare's like. You ever, you, ever thing, go to the, you ever go to the pharmacy in Sri Lanka? or no, some, you, you don't want to because uh, the stuff that we're used to getting, that's not available. That's not available. Or sometimes there's a language barrier. Right. Sometimes the instructions are written in a totally different language. And it's easier now. We have smartphones. Yeah, yeah. We can try and translate. But still. And the other thing that people don't realize is that when they go back to their home country, they assume eli- <laughs> I'm so I can't say it. They consider that they are automatically eligible for yeah. free health care. Yeah, and that's not. actually not the case. No. If you've been at the NHS for six months, you're, you're not really eligible. Same in Canada. Yeah. I mean, I always, we, you know, fortunately I've got, health insurance from my employer that translates over to Canada, but I always get travel insurance as well. Yes. Because you can never be too sure. It's not even, so travel insurance, obviously, but make sure you have a good medical insurance. Yeah. And the other thing that you want to look at with your medical insurance is that you have a repatriation to your home country. Right. Because if you got really sick and you ended up in a private healthcare system on an ICU bed, that the amount of coverage you're going to get will get yeah. literally used up almost immediately. And so you want repatriation back to the place that you are from or the place that you can get good health care and you know it's going to be covered because travel insurance does, yeah. it runs out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and in fact, even here in the UAE, sometimes our private health care insurance can run out, but yeah. usually in your home country you have a much higher cap than you would elsewhere. So it's very important that you look for repatriation. And then you said as well, James, about the quality of healthcare. I will never forget, I had um, a few sherbets and I was going for a walk at night and I smashed my toe into a concrete oh, bollard. No. And it, a few days had passed and I thought, you know, I'm going to get this checked because my toe resembled the width of a cocktail sausage. Uh-oh. And as I walked in, the receptionist said, you've not broken your toe and, <laughs> and dismissed me. I wasn't allowed to go for an x-ray, got back to Dubai, decided to check it out because it was still excruciatingly painful and it was smashed. I mean, the bone was completely smashed, but in this hospital, they wouldn't even yeah. um, x-ray it for me. Jeez. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, but the thing is, is would it stop you traveling? No. Yeah. No, no, never. So the the what we what we want to go through is some of the things we want to consider, some of the things we want to bring, sort of that travel kit that you might want to put together that you may never open, but you might need. And whether you're traveling with kids, whether you're traveling alone, whether you're traveling just you know as a couple, just those things that we take for granted when we're here at home that you could use. And and often it it's not it's not expensive. It's just a little bit of planning. Yeah, it is. It's always worth going to see your GP, really, before you travel. Mm. Make sure you're up to date with all your prescriptions. You've got enough and some contingency to cover you for your your vacation. And And it's also really important that you put it in your hand luggage. A lot of people put it in their checked bag. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, especially if it's, you could be on daily aspirin or simvastatin, for instance, because you have some heart trouble um, and problems with your blood pressure. These are not things that you want to arrive at, um, at your destination and say, oh, my bag didn't arrive. How am I going to get these now? And that, so, this is how, and especially post-pandemic now, yeah. all we keep hearing about is, you know, the, the summer is going to be brutal for air travel. Flights canceled, not enough staff airport delays, airport issues. It's the number of people who are going to lose their luggage. I hate to say it. It's going to be huge. So why put yourself in that position? I get really worried about losing luggage generally. So you don't want to have medication or anything that is really fundamental to your health and and well-being. So often, and I've done it myself, I've been in the aircraft and I didn't carry Calpol which is paracetamol for infants. See, got to have that handy. Children. Yeah, exactly, have it handy. You can also ask your airline if there is something that you need when you're up in the air because there's such a huge population of people travelling mm. in one go and you don't think, well, what's the healthcare available in the sky? Very limited. Um, there are more people that pass away in, in the aircraft than you could ever imagine and you have less oxygen in the air. There's, you know... Although they have very good filtration systems, there's still quite a lot of sharing going on. Um, And you'll often find, for instance, we saw somebody being sick in the aircraft uh, as we were departing on the last flight I was on. The next minute, one by one, my whole family went down. And these people were quite a way away from where Mm. we were sat. 
So there's a lot of sharing that goes on. So it's always good to have medication with you because some airlines will, and the, it is regulated by the aviation authorities, and they will say what medications they have to carry. But there are others that they may carry or they may not carry. So it's always worth, if you're worried about your child getting sick or having a, a sore tummy or a sore yeah. throat, to carry that in your hand luggage as well. Okay, so what are the kind of things we would be carrying in this case? So we've got... If we're worried about, you know, as you said, some basic paracetamol, ibuprofen kind of stuff, have that with you. Have have a little supply. Yes. If you are somebody that wears contact lenses, oh, yeah. make sure you have some saline drops. <gasps> Better to wear your glasses. but And just eye drops as well. I mean, so, you yeah. know, your typical Visine or whatever it is. Uh, just if, if you're wearing contacts, obviously. But the amount of time we spend looking at screens and stuff a little bit of eye moisture is always good yeah there's a lack of humidity in in the sky as well so when you're on an aircraft it's quite drying environment and so if your eyes get very dry it puts you more prone to infection so Mm. the first thing that could happen when you arrive on holiday is you get like a blepharitis so you've got kind of an infection around your eyelashes and and then that's that's you trying to find a doctor to try and get the um, antibiotic drops so no better carry some antibiotic some drops. drops with you <laughs> no <laughs> not necessarily because you can't take everything I, you can't take absolutely i know you'd like to james but you can't take everything <laughs> but what you can do is just get some normal saline drops or uh-huh. some hypermellows eye drops and um, pop them in during the flight take your contact lenses out put your glasses on it's going to be more comfortable yeah. for you as well apart from anything and um, make sure at the airport you've purchased a bottle of water because they do bring around little tiny waters but they're small and you should be drinking more water yeah, than is my, provided. I always bring on my leader. You know, the, the one airport I love is Schiphol because... Which one's that one? That's in uh, Amsterdam. Ah, yes, yes, I know the one. And what's nice about Schiphol, and I think it's the only airport in the world that I've ever experienced this on, because, you know, you get on a plane and then you've you've brought, you've you've gone through and you finally bought your giant bottle of water. And then you go on the plane, then you get off the plane and that giant bottle of water suddenly, it's like, oh, you can't bring that through. It might it might be contaminated. It might have you know. It's like come on, I got it off the plane. I brought it. You know, no, Schiphol. They have a water sensor tester. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. So if you've got a, a full thermos thing of water, a water container, you don't have to empty it out. They just put it through a different a different scanner. Yeah. That's really. I, I, I mean, I, I've only, never actually the only, had my water taken off me when I've arrived at the destination. Oh, I, mean, I get that all the time when I fly into Paris and other places. It's like gone. It's like you go through a, the transit check-in areas, and it's like you can't bring that water on. Wow, well, maybe it's you never your know. face. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's long hair. It's like, like, yeah, that guy doesn't look trustworthy. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why, but maybe maybe I, I shouldn't have carried yeah. it through. Oh, gosh, uh, don't don't uh, get me if anyone's listening. But make sure you have water. Make sure you've got plenty, Hydration. plenty of water. Try not key. to drink too much alcohol as well because it's very dehydrating. And, and so is fizzy caffeine. drinks. Fizzy yeah. drinks. Caffeine also. Oh, man. Also, don't forget, with regards to fizzy drinks, when you're in the air, and the reason there's not as much oxygen in the air is because gas particles expand mm. because the atmospheric pressure is less. So as you get further up in the sky, oxygen disperses. So you, in, in one particular space, you will have less oxygen particles but this also applies to any air that is inside you. So if you have gas in your bowel, for instance, and you're drinking fizzy drinks from your stomach, that gas is also going to expand. And it's why a lot of people will complain of bloating. But it also puts you at risk for things like if there's um, if, if you can't equalize your ears because, again, yeah. gas expands, it can cause perforation of, of your eardrum. Um, and also if somebody was to have problems with their lungs, um, I mean, it's a bit it's a bit over the top, but it's something that we like when we were doing the air ambulance stuff is that if someone has something like a tension pneumothorax, for instance, which is where part of their lung collapses and there's this sort of a pocket of air outside of the lung, that can get scary very quickly because the air expands. So if you are having like tummy issues and things like that, um, better to take something like a buscapan, which will help. Buscapan. It's, an, it's an antispasmodic. Mm. Mebeverine is the generic. Um, and that will help to dissolve, not won't dissolve, sorry, that will help to reduce the... Um, any spasms in your bowel but also um to take something that absorbs gas so you can buy things like charcoal tablets or you can buy i can never say the word but it's like simethicone and it's things um 
I can't remember the the brand names, but there's quite a few of them in Dubai. But just look for one that anti gas. Ah. And what they do is they actually absorb the gas effectively. Okay. Um, they break it down. So you recommend good taking to, something like that before you fly, just to make would it make flying a little bit more pleasant? Yes and no. Oh. Um, I don't okay. think you need to take buscapan unless you start to have stomach pains because okay. not everybody is going to develop stomach pains. Yeah. It's when and it's whether you are prone to these things. Most people have flown enough that they know if this is something yeah. that they'll get or not. With regards to the um, like a Wendy's type tablet, that's one of them that they they sell in the pharmacies here. I wouldn't take it unless you needed it. The reason being is that sometimes these medications have got sweeteners in, oh. and sweeteners can also actually cause gas. Really? So I yeah, didn't know that. It's it's a bit of a. Um, it's like if someone's had some hard candy sweets that are low sugar, they will often have diarrhea or a lot of gas. And there's a huge population of people that cannot break down sweetness at all. So it just remains, it just accumulates gas in their bowel. So take them if you need them, for sure. But don't take them if you don't need them because it might actually create its own little problems. Yeah. Uh, if you do have a lot of gas, it will help. But don't take them unless unless you need to because you will usually, on the back of the ingredients, you will find that they do have some sort of sweetener, even if it's a natural one. Mm. Okay, so we've we've got a, a few areas we've covered here right now, which is good, and it's again little things you might want to have just handy, just in case. Well, we haven't even arrived at the destination yet. This is just in the air. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. So it all starts on the aircraft, and the, inevitably you're sitting there for four, six, eight hours, a little bit of stress, and next thing you know, you know, it all starts to happen, and and it's that equalization pressure with the ears. Suddenly, someone who's got had a little bit of an ear infection that you didn't know about, you get up there in the air, that ear infection now becomes gargantuan, and every single passenger knows, especially if you got kids, yes, that there's an ear issue. Oh, because they'd be screaming. Yeah, I mean, we talk about at the destination, but before you even fly, really check you up to date with everything is there a vaccination that your child needs is there something outstanding with your doctor that you should have had done just get it done any of your children need to visit the dentist before you go do you have a brace that needs tightening before you leave this is why it's actually quite stressful before people go away and the longer they're going away for the worse yeah always check what the weather's going to be like. I mean, this is really basic stuff, but yeah, yeah. it's also true. Check what the weather's going to be like where, where you go and just make sure you have clothing for warmer weather and cooler weather, even yeah. if that's not expected, even if it's just one jumper or one uh-huh. vest top, just in case. Yeah. Um, the other thing as well is when we fly, going back to when we fly, is people often like to wear their skinny jeans <laughs> and a nice tight top. Always advisable to wear loose clothing. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we often get as well is if you do a lot of flying is DVTs. So a deep vein thrombosis. Oh. So I, you know, the, the, the airlines used to be really big into all these movement exercises. Yeah. I don't see that anymore. I mean, I know that's on some channel somewhere, but I don't see them talking about that. And, and there's an, an, a slight amount of discouragement from congregating in galleys and things where you stand up. Like they remind you, you know, you shouldn't be congregating, but you bet. But we, we want to make sure we're moving, right? Well, I have two theories on this. Okay. Either you're already asleep by the time the the advertisement <laughs> comes on for it, James. Yeah, which pretty you, much. You do so much stuff. There's a chance. <laughs> yeah. uh, and number two is I think since COVID, it's kind of, they are definitely discouraging people moving around the aircraft, whereas previously it was get up and walk around every half yeah. an hour. Um, so now just make sure you're wiggling your toes, you're moving your legs up and down, moving your feet around. Um, the idea is just to encourage blood flow back to the heart so that yeah. blood doesn't stagnate and you get a clot. Um, and then uh, I think they're the main main points to make about being in the air. Keep hydrated, as we said. Yeah. Wash your hands, clean your hands, especially when you I mean, get up and you're going things and just don't touch your face. Like this is the common stuff that we shouldn't be doing anyway. Yes. And the other thing to do before you depart as well, going back to medications, if there's anything that you take, carry a copy of your prescription oh, and yes. preferably a letter from your doctor. Oh. For instance, if you came from the UK and you were regularly taking a cocodamol, which has an opioid in, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. you come into the UAE, it would probably be confiscated as soon as you arrived. Um, or actually, you could get into quite a lot of trouble for that. Mm. Um, I was told, and whether it's true or not, that it can be up to four years imprisonment with an opioid without a prescription. Wow. And it's not just a prescription, it should also be a letter from your doctor. Okay. So make sure, because we don't know what each country allows or doesn't allow within the healthcare system, make sure you carry a copy of a letter. 
Again, if you're pregnant, make sure you get a letter from your doctor and also check with each individual aircraft the guidelines for when they have to stop flying. For instance, for a single pregnancy after 36 weeks, they can no longer fly. Mm. So always check things like that as well. And if you're somebody that is not in the best of health and you're planning on traveling, you can actually download from the individual airline forms that you can fill in to ask for special assistance, whether that is Mm. a wheelchair onto or off the plane. It might be oxygen. Maybe you need someone to travel with you. So you contact the individual airline for that as well before you go because a lot of people think oh I couldn't travel now yeah, I couldn't yeah. travel <laughs> well maybe you might be able to but yeah. just go and have a little look about what's available for you from that airline right. specifically so there's, there's a lot of little, little prep to do uh, but it depends how ill you are <laughs> generally it depends how good a health most of us face it most people they just take their wheelie bag yeah. and they they just get on the plane but you know, um, for a lot of people, traveling is a huge thing. I mean, we've talked, you've met my mum a few times now. And even for my mum, traveling in the airport's an issue because of her feet. It, right. it can literally wreck her feet and back just with such a long walk. But she won't accept a wheelchair. So sometimes there are things that are available if you yeah. if you need them. All right. So we we finally landed. We're, we're at the destination. We're there. We've made it. Woohoo! Welcome to Barbados. <laughs> the temperature outside is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we've got a whole other set of things we've got to start thinking about. We're, we're in an environment with new foods, different water filtration, mm-hmm. air stuff. It's, it's all waiting for us. It is. I feel like we're really trying to put people off going on a holiday here, James. So. <laughs> no, I just want people to be prepared and be, be thinking, thinking, thinking very much about what's happening, where we're going. Okay, so it obviously depends where we go, how tropical the environment is. Did we need vaccinations or anti-malaria tablets before we've even set off? And then when we're there, the most common thing that people tend to get is something called traveller's diarrhoea. And the mm. reason for that is that even if and I would advise most people don't drink the water in the country that they're going to and they and beware of ice cubes too because a lot of times the ice comes just from tap water but it's not even just that think yeah. about the food that you eat if you go to a salad bar yeah the lettuce is going to be washed in that water um you know you can't entirely avoid the water so you want to minimize it as much as possible yeah. you brush your teeth with bottled water you drink bottled water as far as is possible um, unless you're going somewhere like Canada, the UK, America, where you know it's it's safe to drink and it's, you know, but even then, even then, the thing is, is that the filtration systems, as you say, are different. The bacteria or everything that is that is present, and especially on food, they have different types of um, bacteria yeah. or viruses, et cetera, that live on, live on surfaces, on foods, within things that you're not used to. Yeah. Whereas we it's that built, difference. It's the yeah, difference that becomes the, it's the, the difference. key. Because ev- it's everywhere. Yeah. So we have built up a tolerance to it here in the UAE, for instance. Yeah. But then if we go to Thailand for the week, we haven't built that tolerance up. It's, it's new and we get diarrhea. So very, very common to get traveler's diarrhea. And the first thing most people do is want to take an emodium yeah. to help clog them up if they've got diarrhea. And I advise, unless you're getting on a plane, try not to let your oh. body... Let your body get rid of it. Let it go. Keep um, the flow. Yes, keep the flow. Unless, unless obviously you're starting to become dehydrated. Because that's, that's what usually what everyone does. They've got the travel diarrhea. They get travel diarrhea, so they've got their emodiums, you know, sitting there. The Pepto Bismol, they're ready to go. Well, it, Pepto Bismol's okay, but the emodium, unless you're getting on a plate, and the usual advice, or someone's becoming so severely dehydrated because yeah. they're they're losing so much water. By which case, they're normally managed by an inpatient facility anyway. Um, so normally advise just, just just try and just hold off on uh, it because oh. it can then make you quite constipated and also your bowel is still going to be very irritable and it kind of wants to expel. Yeah. What's, that's why it does it. It's trying to get rid of what's considered a poison by okay. the body. So uh, what, what do you recommend then if we're not going, if we're just letting it let it work its course, but we don't want to really start chugging back on, you know, popping the emodiums, especially the fast acting ones coming in a sleeve of six and you do only take three, <laughs> you're done. You're done right at that point. James has done this a few times. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, so what do you recommend to help uh, you know stiffen up the stool so not it's not necessarily about stiffening up the stool <laughs> I just thought that was a nice it, rolled, like it off, rolled off the tongue there I can see how <laughs> I, it, I, I almost think we could get out the guitars and we've got a little riff there stiffen up, up the stool, stool. <laughs> that's like my boys keep saying I don't want to go to school in the morning and I'm like I don't want to go to school I don't want to go to school it's like you have to make a song out of it um so what I would suggest really is 
people are quite adamant that they need to eat. They feel yeah. that they really need to eat, especially if you've paid all inclusive. Of course you want to eat. Yeah. However, your stomach is basically hyperreactive at this stage. So every time you eat, you actually set off the reflex to try and basically cause a bowel movement. And that's why a lot of people, when they're having their breakfast, especially men, they will then go and empty their bowels um, quite soon after. Um, my dad like clockwork every single day of his life. <laughs> and really what you want to do is just let everything settle down. Uh-huh. So you can take things like buscapan, but to be honest, I, 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 I don't like giving such generic advice to everybody because everyone's yeah. a little bit different. Um, so you, you kind of want to try and reduce the spasms in the stomach. Take it easy. Take small sips of water. If you are feeling very nauseous, you can consider an anti-sickness medication as well because that's a, a lot more difficult to tolerate than diarrhea. Um, and just make sure that you're taking rehydration sachets right. as well. That's not a bad thing to take on I, holiday. I just, I do, I note aside, I just read something by someone who was talking about, you know, office work and just being in all of these buildings again and, and things. And they have a, a couple, of, maybe one of these rehydration sachets a day mm. at work. And they said they feel so much better After. than they did before they started doing this. And they, you know, they said, look, they're, you know, sugar free or whatever, and they're not full of, uh, you know, substitute chemicals to give sweetness. But they said it really makes a big difference. They didn't realize how dehydrated they were getting working indoors. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't comment necessarily yeah. specifically on that because I guess it's got something to do with air conditioning. Yeah, whatever isn't building it? they're in. But if you have diarrhea, for sure you want to be taking hydration sachets. So good to have some of those sachets in the emergency kit that you've got in your bag. It is a really good idea, yeah, yeah. especially pediatric and adults if you're okay. um, if you're traveling with children. Because children especially, because they're not as exposed yeah. um, as, as adults to all these different types of bacteria or flora. And just imagine you're at, you're at a hotel you're, or you're at someone's place or you're at an Airbnb and this is going to kick in at an hour, like, you know, 7 in the morning or 10 at night. And you're not going to know where to go. You're not going to be able to find these things. And all you're going to say, oh, don't worry. I have a stash. If you have nothing available and you want to try and rehydrate, there was a GP I used to work with. And rather than say to go down and buy Dyrolite, he used to tell every patient, take some warm water, put in a spoonful of sugar and a spoonful of salt and mix it in. Now, that sounds awful, but it'll probably do the job. Not not as well as rehydration, but it's it's something because you are, you're trying to replace salt and sugar. If you stop passing urine, your lips become so dried and oh, cracked, you're, you kind of lose, if you, if you pinch your skin and it kind of just stays and it doesn't bounce back, it's effectively you lose the skin turgor. How, how do and you get to that point? Like that sounds very, to me like... Very dehy- well, you know, the biggest one, of the, I can't remember whether it's the biggest killer or I think it's actually the biggest killer in the third world is, is diarrhea. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's it. It's dehydration. Yeah, I believe it. So it's dehydration that you're aiming to avoid more than anything. And let's face it, it's miserable. You go on holiday, this isn't what you go for. So that's why, as James said, making sure you wash your hands, you avoid yeah. take, you avoid undercooked chicken, you, um, you don't eat rice that's been laid out for absolutely hours if you can avoid it. You, you know, where possible, you're, you're ordering fresh meals or yeah. restaurants that look, look clean as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, that's it's going to be a good yeah. start. And then just, as you said, making sure you have some of these, you know, electrolyte stuff with you. Don't be jumping on the emodiums right off the bat. Let things work its course. What What are the things that we can eat to help give us to, to generally in a, a diet anyway, if we're loose stooled? What, what are some of the things you might suggest? Um, normally fiber, actually, okay. although fiber is considered something that you would take if you're constipated yeah, to yeah. help a bowel movement. Yeah. It can also work the other way as well and just help bulk you up a little bit. Okay. But to be honest, if someone did have a diarrhea, I always say eat bland. So you're looking, all the things that Dr. Atkins says don't <laughs> eat, yeah. piece of piece of toast, uh-huh. um, not not so much rice, but just like a cracker, salty cracker, something yeah, like that. Okay. They're the things that you would have. To, if you are... If you do have a lot of diarrhea, you want to try and stay away as well from things like prunes, fruit juice, Uh too much fruit generally because it's the sugars. um, And just go for things like, um, uh, again, again, it'd be something quite bland as well. Um, Bread is quite good as well because it's quite sticky. So it helps everything to stick together a little bit more. I see people coming on vacations and I, I see this because I'm privileging quite a bit and I see a lot of tourists 
first thing, two things I notice. One, these tourists do not seem to wear hats mm. ever. They're in the sun, they're in the heat, and for whatever reason, heads are not covered. Two, they have some of the most exquisite sunburns I've ever seen in my life. Have you ever seen a bald guy that's been wearing a baseball cap? That's classic. And and I, I you know, I've seen men and women. It's it's you know, a gender neutral with these exquisite. Been on a vacation. I've got the suntan burn to prove it. And I, all I ever think is that person's going to be in so much pain this evening. And, you know, they're, they're going to be hot. They're going to be headache. They're going to be in, you know, have physical pain. <laughs> what what, do you, what are your some of the suggestions for how those people might want to plan ahead? Because, you know, they're just going to do it anyway. Don't, don't get burnt in the first instance. I mean, I wear a full sun it, top. Yeah. I'm, I'm always getting pulled over by the lifeguards. That's not a sun top. I said, no, no, this is Rip Girl. It's a sun top. It's, it's sad, really, because we associate having, especially in, in if you're fair skinned, having a tan yeah. as a sign of health. Whereas all the darker skinned people I know, a lot of the Filipinas, yes. they're all got umbrellas. They don't, yeah. want, any, don't want any sun on and them. And they actually use creams to help yeah. like lighten their skin. So it's funny, isn't it? Because we do, we associate it with health or people say, gosh, you look well, have you been on holiday, etc." And I just think you need to, to fake it as much as possible. Yeah. It is a nice feeling to be out in the sunshine, especially sure. if you are from the UK and you're used to the grey skies and the miserable weather. There's something absolutely delightful about having that sun sinking into your skin. But I think it's minimise it. Yeah. Try and do it away from the midday heat. We all hear mm. that all the time. Be aware that really sunscreen should be replaced every two hours. People don't realize yeah. that that's the link. If you haven't got factor 30 on, it's not really worth it to be honest. It should be factor 30 and above. There is debate about, well, factor 50 is better than factor 30. <laughs> I have read in so many places that factor 50 will protect you that bit more than factor 30. And I've read in other places that factor 30 is effectively a sunblock at 90, 97%. <laughs> so what's the point in factor 50? I don't know. But basically the minimum line is factor 30 is, is, yeah. is your cut off. Um, and you shouldn't really go below that. The other thing that you can do is get a physical sunblock. And I don't know if you've seen anybody that when they put the sunscreen on, it almost like glimmers. They look almost like a little ghost yeah. because it, they have they a, the like zinc a film. On. Yeah, zinc oxide, titanium oxide. They are the, the best sunscreens for, for skin generally because they have a physical barrier, not just this chemical barrier. Um, and the other thing is to, if you do get burnt, wear loose clothing, moisturize like crazy, yeah. check your moles regularly, um, and then and, and really pull back from being in the sun. So if you get burnt on the Monday, I wouldn't be going out and thinking, but I'm only here a few days, I've yeah. got to get back in uh, the that's sun. That's what they do, that's you, what they do though. Yeah, but you need to really pull back. Yeah. And also don't forget, if you're in the pool, that can really reflect the sun as well. Yeah. And it can actually, if you've got your head and shoulders outside of the pool, you're actually getting more rays. Yeah. One last thing to say about this, James, um, is that there are two types of, um, actually there's more than this, but usually we associate with sunlight. We have UVA, UVB. Yeah. UVA is aging and we get that even when it's cloudy. So yeah. you don't realize that you're still having sun damage even on a cloudy day. UVB is burning and that's usually that more raw, intense sun that you get when you're right. on holiday and you're in Tenerife or Ibiza or whatever or here in the UAE. And that's what causes burning. And people think sometimes that just because they're burnt or not burnt that they have or they haven't damaged their skin. UVA is there all the time. So you are always being damaged by sun exposure mm, without okay. protection. All right. Bandages, uh, compresses, stuff like that. Do you ever pack any of those when you're going away? I always Pass take them. plasters, yeah. not as much bandages. It's not a bad idea to take yeah. them. And a little you bit can, of gauze. Yeah, a little bit of gauze. Hydrogen peroxide. Um, yeah, I mean, we're getting, we're getting quite far now, but I think something like a germaline or a Savalon yeah. here in the UAE, we're quite lucky that over the counter we can buy things like Fusidin, yeah, yeah. which is a little antibiotic cream. And you can also buy over the counter antifungals yeah. like fluconazole or meconazole. They're not, they're not bad to have and they're only small, they're yeah, tiny, yeah. you can take them in. Some places, some pharmacies, and I think Emirates Airline as well, if you, if you go to the shop at the headquarters, will also sell a small like a pack, a first aid kit. And so you can buy ready-made first aid kits and they will have things like a bandage, a sling, plasters, mm. um, sort of cleaning agents, yeah. alcohol gel, um, maybe a small pack of paracetamol. You know, you know, yeah, you yeah. can you can buy them ready-made too. In all, case. That, all that stuff, headaches, a little bit of stomach stuff. You, you kind of, those are, I mean, that's, if you, if you sort of scroll back, this is what we've, we're advocating here is be prepared and, and have, 
those little things because especially if you have kids, you know, you know this. You, you, there's going to be scrapes. There's going to be bruises. You're going to need to put on some antiseptic cream or, you know, a plaster. But how lucky are we now? Because years ago, you know, if you needed to apply a sling or you needed to clean a wound because there was no doctor available or, I mean, I have to say nurses are far better at putting on bandages and, and cleaning things like that, far better. Um you should see the the state of some of the patients walking out for me when I've done it, you know, because we always say that nurses are so much more, I don't know why, I think because there's more training for them in it yeah. and they always produce these beautifully bandaged patients and where it just looks awful when um, when, when I've done it anyway. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now. You were, saying, you, were just, you were saying we were so <laughs> lucky. Oh, so yeah, we're so lucky because we've got Google. Right. Imagine if you're there at 3 a.m. in the morning and you're cleaning a wound. Yeah. And you can you can look at Google and say, right, this is how I'm supposed to do it. Here's Dr. Such and Such. They're teaching me. And then they're going to show me how to apply a sling. Yeah. How many awful, like, cack handed slings have you seen? People trying to make it up themselves to do it. So we're so lucky that we have access to effectively an encyclopedia of do-it-yourself healthcare when there is nobody available yeah. to, to help you. Touch wood, I've never had to use a sling. We've had, we've had uh, you know, a tensor bandage we've needed occasionally. Lots of Band-Aids, lots of Fusidin used and, and stuff like that. Uh, but otherwise, we've always had, you know, an, an, an occasional upset stomach and headaches and things like that. So all those core stuff. As we were talking about, you know, eyes that are itchy. So, you know, a little bit of eye moisturizer, antibiotics with, you know, drops that we've had, those kind of things. Warts. Oh, we've had a few warts, though. Mm-hmm. Did you get them, how did you have them removed or did you just leave just, them to be? Just left them and then use. They go on their own, use, eventually. Use the, you know, some of that wart removal stuff. I think. We've, you know, some big ones have come out. Those we've gone and had removed, so. So I have to show you, there is something here. Have I, I think I've shown you this before, Wilfred's Grave. So I had a really small wart, and yeah. I forgot that I was allergic to cryotherapy. Uh-oh. And I remember having a Veruca when I was younger, and it exploded with the cryotherapy. So I decided to go and get it frozen off, yeah. and it exploded again, <sighs> and it became a friend of... <laughs> That's giant. It, well, it was. It was It was the biggest wart you've ever seen. It was right on wow. my wrist, and we called it Wilfred, me and my mates. And then eventually I went to the dermatologist and said, please cut this out. And he said, you can have a huge scar. I was like, I don't care. Just get rid of this wart. Yeah. And, um, and I did, so now we've got this big... Big scar there. But yeah, normally warts leave well alone and they will just go on their own. Yeah. But yeah, you can pick things up like that and verrucas and things like that around the pool. Not much you can do about that really unless you're going to start having your children in in, in sort of yeah. swim socks, which you can do and you can yeah. buy But then you've got to be thinking here. fungal stuff because you might get athlete's foot. and depending. Make sure you dry between your toes yeah. because if you have a warm, wet environment, it's the perfect environment for... Yeah. Uh, fungi and to so start just, reproducing and just you know as you're living in a bathing suit or whatever you're doing and if you're in a moist area and I, it could be a place where there's lots of humidity or it just could be the fact that you're walking around with wet swim stuff on the potential for fungus and all sorts of funky places is there so drying and you know maybe just have a little bit of powder something you can put on just to keep things dried up well that's obviously your words of wisdom there james <laughs> um, the other thing as well is if you are going to go on away is just consider for yourself and for women if you're going to put your hair in the pool all the time it's uh-huh. going to be super chlorinated and it can make your hair exceptionally brittle very Ooh. very dry so for a lot of people, it's quite advisable to just put a sun cap or some sort of baseball cap on anyway, which is protective for your face. The one area that is, except, or there's two areas that are exceptionally predisposed to skin cancer are your lips uh-huh. and your ears, tips of your ears. What about your nose? I mean, the, the, this yeah, whole, your nose, I mean, I'm, nose. I'm always really pedantic about keeping the nose covered. No, well, the nose people are more... People tend to put some block on their nose more than they would remember yeah. their ears. Yeah, I forget about the and, ears. And your lips. You actually yeah. don't have any melatonin in your oh, lips. Yeah. So I forget about the lips too all the yeah, time. Yeah, so, so your nose, absolutely, because it sticks right out. And yeah. people that are bald as well, that their, their, mm. their heads. Um, but don't forget to put sunscreen in, in these spots as well, because yeah. they are. You can buy a lip balm with yeah. some block in, and don't forget, every two hours you should be making an application. Hours. And... Put it on bef- about an hour before you go into the. That's important. To an hour, That's yeah. important. You're, you know, wherever you are before sure. you get there, apply so that it's. The the common thing is for people to apply the sunscreen and jump straight in the pool, <laughs> and apart from the fact that one, the sunscreen hasn't had time to sort of build up its effect. Also, you're jumping into the pool, and and a lot of them aren't waterproof, and if they are yeah. waterproof, it, they have to dry for a period of time. Yeah. So yeah, you should be before you go for your breakfast. 
put your sunscreen on and then you head out to the... Don't forget the there's all those spray ones too that, that just get lost in the wind. You spray it oh, on Yeah, you, you really don't like it's those, gone. Do you, it's no? gone. No, because yeah. you watch them and you just see the cloud going in the opposite direction. It's like... So. That's true. You've but, applied nothing. But it's also the smell is, I have to say, I do like the smell because it reminds me of like nice sunny days. You can just smell that whiff of sunscreen. Pita colada. Yeah. Oh, that smells great. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, we sort of made it sound very doom and gloom about going away and it's not meant to be at all. It's just, just precaution. Think, just think, just think. Make yeah. sure you got all your medications, like you said, carry them on board so you've got a stash and away you go. It's it always plan, plan and think. Plan and think. Maybe visit your GP before you go. Are there any vaccines that you should have had for this yeah. particular destination? Do you need anti-malarial? Is the Zika virus there and you happen to be trying for a baby? When did you get your tetanus last updated? Exactly. Absolutely, James. Every 10 years you should be having it. So it's the other thing as well is a lot of people here tend to travel with home help. And oh, okay, what they okay. haven't realized is they might be completely up to date with their vaccines. They had all their childhood vaccinations. But the people that they're taking are maybe not from as privileged yeah. an area. And they're taking them on holiday. And, and actually, they are really at risk because they've not had their childhood yeah. vaccinations. Maybe they didn't, they've never had a tetanus, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they've never had an MMR really good idea and it's expensive sometimes to go and get them checked as well what did they need before but they travel don't just to. keep thinking about you yeah. and your immediate family if you're taking somebody else with you there's a responsibility to be had there as well yeah, there we go anything else you want to add if we i think we've we've nailed a whole bunch of stuff here have fun and have also, fun <laughs> uh, if you are someone that is predisposed or you get really regular ear infections from the pool take earplugs that's a great idea yeah, a lot, a lot of people do because certain people tend to just get, get it more often for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, encourage your children not to urinate in the pool <sighs> or the sea. If you've got a baby and some nappies, change them regularly because they, they really, they, they don't hold much. Yeah. Um, most pools do tend to have um, an accident where a child goes oh. to the toilet for number two yeah. in there. That's more common than you'd realise. Yeah. So again... Drink, don't drink the water put your earplugs in if you've got them um but have fun have you know fun. don't be entirely put off have fun yeah have fun plan ahead but have fun jenna this has been a lot of fun i can't wait till we do this again real soon but i think we've we've given everyone a whole bunch to think about we'll post up the show notes because they're extensive and we'll do it all again real soon can't wait james <laughs> happy holidays <laughs> there we go this has been the doc talk podcast with dr jenna burton i'm james pikeaway go and scroll down through the rest of our shows you're gonna love what you get to hear and we'll talk to you again really really soon so long for now